Hello, welcome to a new episode of Entre Artistas with Josias Chant. Josias Chant is a Swiss Canadian director, actor, producer, and writer. He is the founder and co owner of Counting Ants Production and a co owner of Rareborn Media. We have the honor of his presence on this occasion. Welcome, Joey. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me, Miguel. Great to be on your on your show. Thank you for ac accepting the the invitation. I would like to start by congratulating you on the career you have. You are my honorable master, and you have always propelled my propel me into my artistic career every time you can. Furthermore, I would like to add that you have worked with many international recognized actors and independent artists like me who don't have as much visibility. But however, you always gave me excellent treatment and guided me with a lot of care and you were always extremely professional. So I'm glad to be your student. Uh, I would like to start mm -hmm. with the most recent events. Uh, what projects are you working on right now? What projects are on the doorstep? Right. So yeah, right now I'm working on a few projects. So this last year and this year right now, uh, it's mainly documentary films. One is is quite interesting. It's called Taming the Beast. It's the story of Eddie Hall. He's the strongest man on the planet, yeah. um, or was. And um, it's his struggle uh, with mental health, but also a character study. And the film features um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Jason Statement. Uh, so there, there's quite a bit of um, stardom in the film. Um, and it's a great character study of his life, his accolades, and um, he, how he's dealing with some of the challenges he's going through. The other film that I'm working on is a film actually uh, produced uh, by a Swiss company. Uh, it's called The Belonging, and it's about soccer players. I know a lot of Mexicans, of course, they love football. Yes, they love we soccer. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's about major, uh, in this case, Swiss football players like Manuela Kanji, Brelembolo, Granichaka, and many people don't know, Ivan Rakitic, who played for Barcelona, is actually also Swiss. And yeah. those players had to make a decision uh, to just represent one nation on the biggest platform, uh, which in football and soccer can lead to... A big turmoil. Uh, some of them got death threats. Some of them got their passports revoked. Um, you know, it yeah. it creates a big internal conflict. So the the documentary is about what happens when you need to decide for just one nation and you actually have two hearts in one chest. Okay. Um, so that's one. That's another one. And then uh, I'm working on two fictional pieces and another documentary uh, about wildfires in my home community here. So I've been. I've been busy. I've had a lot of yeah, projects on my plate, um, but it's been good. It's been good. I got to travel a lot. And last year I was in 10 or 12 countries filming. So I cannot complain. Things have been good and I'm very blessed. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. You deserve it. So going into the matter, I would like to know if you could share with, uh, with the audience your directing methods. What do you expect from actors when you have them under your tutelage? What habits or skills should an actor have on set with you so that you can make the most of his potential? Yeah, so that's a good question. It all depends on the level of the actor, too. As you know, Miguel, right, you you took my acting class when yes. I was teaching. So it's a different thing then because you have actors that are maybe just learning or, or starting. But when you have a big name actor, you know, um, obviously you don't want to <laughs> teach him how to act they, or her. They know how to act. Yeah. But I think the most important thing is to create an atmosphere of trust where the actors know that they're safe and that they can shine and create a character. And what you want to do is not uh, as a director is not dictate you don't want to tell them what to do but you want to guide them you know yes. you're more like a guide um to to find the right tools to create the the characters that they want and to also make sure that their arc the character arc is um cohesive throughout the arc of the film and, and if you can do that then i think um you know you have the perfect formula to be successful with any actor oh that's really nice and very interesting so audience can, can see the point of view of a, a director like you. Uh, we met in Vancouver, Canada, and you gave me my first professional experience in 2013 uh, with Jane Franco, with a Jane Franco film. <laughs> that was oh, yeah. huge for me, very <laughs> huge. Could you share any anecdotes you enjoyed during that shooting? 
Yeah, so this was, yeah, this was, uh, I, I almost forgot about that. You're right. So we did a, a film with James Franco back then, and uh, he was in town shooting the interview. And I, I know uh, his producer, uh, she's a friend, Iris to uh, Torres, Iris Torres, and she, she, um, she got us that opportunity. And then, yes, I think um, uh, what sticks out there is just, um, you know, um, we were trying to to create LA Confidential, but in a very unique way. <laughs> and yeah. uh, you and and I think 10 or 12 other guys um, were, um, you know, gangsters fighting James in uh, in that studio that we went to. I forgot which studio it was, um, but it, it, it was definitely an interesting experience. And you know, working and and uh, with with a high end caliber um, actor like James uh, at the time uh, was very big for me as well. And I think we all um, got a chance to just see how he works and how he um, interacts with actors. And, yes. and uh, yeah, he's very intense, right? He's like, okay, yes. you, I want you to go here and you here, and yeah, you know, and and <laughs> but um, it was a it was a great experience. Um, and I got to take care of his two cats too with Iris because uh, he had the two cats with him back then. I remember in a hotel room. So, and they're oh. identical. <laughs> That's what I remember from the shoot. It's now quite a, a ways back, but um, it was a great experience. And I'm glad I forgot that you were a part of it, of course, and got a chance to also um, enjoy that experience. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, the other question I would like to, to make is, I made you, as I said, in 2013. How has changed the way to audition after the pandemic there in Canada? Yeah, well, that's exactly why I don't remember all the details. 2013, <laughs> that's a long time ago, right? Yeah. Um, wow. I didn't know we go that far back, Miguel. That's amazing. Um, the uh, um, I think the auditions, what really changed, and it's interesting because I actually just interviewed a major uh, casting director here uh, for her documentary, um, Candice Elzinga. She's she's one of the top um, casting directors here. And uh, we talked about that. And what really changed is um, the fact that prior, all the auditions, of course, were in person, right? So yes. you would come into the audition room, you would sit there with 20, 30 other people sometimes, and yeah. you would get your audition slot. That, that, of course, changed a lot during the pandemic because there were no in-person auditions anymore. So people would send in their tapes instead of auditioning in person. And from what Candace told me, that added a lot more work for casting directors and for agents because they now had way more possibilities, but also way more tapes to look at. Yes. So they had to look at 200, 300, 400 tapes for one role and then start to narrow it down and have, you know, the 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 final calls where they would they would ask them to come back to to do their final auditions. Uh before that was not like that. You 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 could select right from the bat in person they come in it's done right yeah so it has opened the door for actors because now an actor from mexico could literally send in his tape to a role here like for example they're filming the last of us right now uh, i don't know if you're familiar with that oh, show it's, it's amazing it's i played the video game the two two parts i'm a oh, yeah? big, big <laughs> fan yes yeah it's filming down the street actually um and okay. um and so, you know, it would be possible for someone like you or any actor to send in a, an audition tape to an agency that is casting this series or, or any film and get a chance before that was not the case. Yeah. You know, you had to be there physically. You had to be at the audition physically or through an agency. So it opened up the door, I would say, for a lot of actors internationally yes. too. But it made it probably more difficult and in a way maybe also even a bit more competitive because there is more there's more of the pool of actors now uh but there's also more possibilities at the same time for anyone around the world to get their tape submitted i think that's the biggest difference wow that's very interesting thank you for sharing that it's very important for the audience so uh, another question i would like to to ask you is could you share with the audience you know, with which directors you base or admires or, or, or admire to carry out your work? Yeah, that's always a tough question because obviously I've been inspired by many filmmakers. You know, I, I mean, when I went to UBC to film school, um, you know, we learned a lot about French New Wave, about, um, you know, obviously expressionists, about um, neorealism. So I learned all those, uh, all those uh, different um, 
epoch of film. But I think as for the newer generation, um, I've always admired um, Quebecois directors here in Canada. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm closer to their vision. And the reason that is, uh, is because they share a perfect blend of European influence because they obviously, Quebecois, they speak French, they still have a little bit of that European feel but they also yeah. have the North American feel. So Jean-Marc Vallée is a big inspiration. A lot of his films, uh, like Crazy, like Café de Flore, I really love. But also uh, Denis Villeneuve, who now has been established uh, as a big Hollywood director because he's directed Dune, he's done Arrival, right? But even his <laughs> earlier work I like. And I must say that a lot of directors also uh, from Mexico really inspired me. I find Mexican directors very interesting because they stick out from they're kind of north american but yet they're they're latino so you know it's yeah. that mix and i i think um um Iñarritu, i i've always liked him you know um uh and i think uh ever ever since uh what was it um babel and, and uh, amores, Pe amores, amores perros he did too right yeah i really like that one that was one of the first i've ever seen yeah uh Definitely quite on as well. Those it just just a lot of great artists uh, from that country. So, um, and um, yeah, I I Gael Garcia is an actor I would always like to work with. I just saw him in Station Eleven. He was in Station Eleven and he stole the show. And he speaks English now pretty fluently with very yeah. minimal accent. And yeah. so you know, there's there's a lot of talent in Mexico, and I think uh, you can't underestimate uh, what is happening in Mexico. The industry is very, very strong. And then last but not least, I would say I'm also a fan of Korean cinema. I really yeah. like Korean cinema. I think they've really come a long ways. There's a lot, like ever since Old Boy, um, you know, there's been a big cat of, like really a, a, a huge movement in, in the right direction. And I've been very impressed with the directors that came out of that country. Yeah, actually here in Mexico, uh, all Korean films, series, are very trendy now all over oh wow country. okay yeah 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 we uh, since i think since parasite it was yeah, right on and then squid right. games or <laughs> yeah yeah so it's, yeah. it's amazing it's amazing how they are uh, they are showing all their skills to the world and mexico it's it's accepting korean films very very good so last but not least, uh, I know you are a very, very busy person, but what do you do in your free time? Which sports teams do you cheer for? Yeah, so in my free time, I mean, you're right, I am busy, but I'm also juggling two careers right now. Also, I still have a band and we're actually doing quite well. We are, we're just releasing a new album and we might go on tour to the UK. The band is called Hourglass Zoo and um, we've done, I, I tried to bridge my passion for film with music in the sense that our music videos, we always make them very cinematic. And then we try to enter into enter those videos into film festivals, which then allows us to target the music audience, but also the film audience. As far as you write, um, which sport team do I cheer for? You know that I love football, soccer. That's also yeah. why I, I'm working on that um, documentary, but I, I do play when I can. Um, it's I also go to CrossFit to stay fit. Um my partner has <laughs> has gotten me into that. Awesome. And um and and as who do I cheer for? I mean, that's you name the league. Um in Mexico, I used to cheer for Tigres, but I don't know if I'm that much of a fan anymore. And I know you're disappointed when I say that, so I yeah. won't say it. But um uh in I would say, you know, it's hard for me to be a fan fan because I have to be open, especially when I work with teams. And I yeah. think I'm more of a fan of the players that I work with because, you know, I get to know them and I get to love their team and I get to see how they work with the teams. Uh, but as a child, I was an Arsenal fan, um, oh, yeah. you know, and I cheered a lot for Arsenal. Great team. Yeah. And uh, it's hard. It's hard for me, you know, when Canada plays Switzerland in hockey or in uh, in, in football, who do I pick? <laughs> right it's it's tough I, I i love both nations and uh it's always uh it's always an internal war um you know maybe for you even a bit because you you you've been in canada for a long time i know you're yeah. mexican but i think part of your heart is probably still here in vancouver isn't it of course yeah you know you know i love canada <laughs> i have special feelings for vancouver i've been there twice twice i've been working with uh, for you i think the last one was with your video um, the music video, yeah, music, where you're playing video. a bad, 
Yeah. You were playing a bad guy, right? You were trying yeah, to I was. Him. I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's Jim, right. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing a part of yourself with us. Uh, could you give your social networks, your social media, so that people can know you even more? Yeah. Um. I mean, on Instagram, uh, my social media is uh, so is counting ants. That's at counting ants. So counting as at one, two, three. C o u n t i n g ants a n t s. Uh, and then on uh, social media, other than that, you can find me under my real name, either Joe Chance T S E H A N Z or Josiah's Chance T S E H A N Z. And the band is called Our Glass Zoo, which is our, as in our, O U R, okay. Glass Zoo. That's the band. And you oh, can well. find that also on social media. Thank you for sharing. Well, I wish you a lot of success in your next projects. And I hope, I really, really hope one day I can work with you for you again. It will be an honor. And I send you a big, big hug for the audience. We see each, each other next episode. I wish you a lot of success to all of you. Goodbye. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.